Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Wednesday, January the 8th. Today, my camera is acting a little finicky, you guys, so you're going to have to deal without seeing my ugly mug. <laughs> anyway, uh, please remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. Let's get it on with the economic data across the pond. We got German factory orders coming in at negative 1.3%. It was expected to be a positive 0.2%, so much lower than expected there. We talked about this before. Germany is in full swing of a recession there, or well, we're hoping here in the United States we don't get drugged down by all of this. Uh, but at this point, looking pretty decent. Uh, we also got our non-farm payroll unemployment change. That is uh, a gauge of hiring going on. 202,000 hires expected to be 160,000, so much better than expected there. Remember, uh, we get the non-farm payroll number tomorrow, or sorry, Friday, which is actually a better indication. This one it is becoming a little bit better. Back in the day, we used to laugh this one off when I was on the floor. So uh, don't hold a lot of weight in this number, but does look pretty promising to be quite honest. And then also last month they revised it from 67,000 hires. And if you remember, that was a pretty disappointing uh, number on that 60,000 hires. It was supposed to be upwards of 140. So it was about half the expected there. Well, they revised that 67,000 back up to 124,000. So a much closer to in line with what was expected that previous month. So uh, all in all, much better economic data coming out of that uh, data point. But we are going to wait to see what the non-farm payrolls on Friday says about the uh, unemployment picture. We also have Bernard and Trump speaking today. Trump probably speaking right now as uh, we are filming this. But we also got crude oil inventories and that came in at a build of one2 million barrels. It was expected to be a drawdown of 3.4 million barrels. Now, if you remember last month, we had a huge drawdown more than expected. Well, now we're making up for that in a build this month. So really, this number is all over the place. We're looking at crude oil right here. And, you know, it is off by about $1.50. You can see that massive spike we had uh, well up into, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, almost $66 a barrel overnight. Well, $65.50. That was because if you, unless you've been under a rock, you know what's going on over in the Middle East. You know, we bombed a general over there in, uh, in Iraq who was from Iran. Well, they retaliated by sending a couple of missiles over uh, to, at a couple of our bases in Iraq. Iran sent a couple of missiles over to Iraq and hit a couple of bases there. Well, it's more of a propaganda thing. You know, those guys couldn't just sit there and say they were going to lay down and not do anything. So they sent these missiles over for propaganda purposes. Over there, they're saying they killed a ton of Americans. And uh, what we're really finding out is they missed their targets, quote unquote, missed their targets, uh, and nobody was injured. So at this point, had somebody gotten injured, I'm sure... It would be a lot more ramped up today than what we're seeing. But right now, uh, at this point, everybody's saying, okay, you know, a tit for a tat, we're all good at this point. So as long as nothing else happens, uh, it looks like it's status quo again. No war, no uh, World War III happening, as some people were trying to say. So we're seeing crude oil really pair a lot of those gains off. Not that Iran or Iraq would have really been a major dent in the supply chain. Uh, you know, if they would have started hitting oil installations, that might have been something. But we already saw when they bombed oil installations back on, I think, September in Saudi Arabia, they ramped those uh, uh, back up to production rather quickly. You know, they actually, they could really pump out some oil over there. It's so easy for them. You know, they're, they're, separating rock from oil we're trying to separate oil from rock which is much more different here or much more difficult here in the united states so they basically can take buckets and go out into the desert and scoop it up anyway so we're seeing crude oil come back off again you know not uh not having the turmoil in the middle east and that major build is really causing some weakness there again 
gold coming off a little bit despite the fact that we went up there and did test that 1600 which i wasn't expecting but you know when you see this kind of uh unrest in the middle east that really causes the markets to be in turmoil and it is gold being it uh, is a safe haven here. So yes, for sure, people would be throwing money at that. All right, bonds are in positive territory. They spiked up to that 160 handle. Um, I think that we're going to continue to see some movement higher towards that 160 handle. There is no uh, chance really that I'm seeing that the Fed is going to raise interest rates, which would cause bonds to come off a little bit. I think we're, we're back into a normalcy type area somewhere above this 157 to 160 area I think is the sweet spot for uh, the bonds even closer to the 160 really. All right, the VIX, we got a massive spike. We're still in the teens, uh, but we did get into the 15 handle that was basically overnight really selling off today as the markets are near the highs of the day. You can see here uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is up 66 points, but you can see where they opened uh, down here around the 28,532. So we are about 25 plus ticks higher than where we were there overnight. It was looking pretty ugly, as we'll see here in the NASDAQ and the E-mini S&Ps. NASDAQ near the highs of the day, up 28 points, 29 points. Very near the highs here. But you can see we were well off and in negative territory by, you know, a couple hundred points from where we are now. So 200 points lower overnight than where we are now. So down about 170 points uh, in the NASDAQ. E-mini S&P is very similar. You know, if we kind of line this up here and just say we were, you know, at 3181, we were at least 65 points off of those lows there. So uh, the market really coming back strong. Now we'll just take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart of the mini S&Ps here. Gray is the overnight. This is where we got news of that bombing of the installations in Iraq. Iran bombing us uh, and you know some of our military bases uh, when there was no real news as to if there were any injuries. This is basically where we said they missed and the market really rallied back and as you can see a bit of consolidation in and around you know we almost might say it was close to an inside day to yesterday uh, had we not had that massive spike down in retrieval but again market really kind of consolidating here. This is kind of what I'm feeling like uh, with this market right now uh, and my portfolio. The weirdest thing is uh, how McDonald's is, uh, is reacting to the markets in, uh, in and around McDonald's. You know, it seems like when there's turmoil over there, it seems like McDonald's is getting hurt, which seems a little bit bizarre to me. It doesn't seem like they are going to be a massive uh, buyer of McDonald's. So I, I, it seems a little bizarre to me that, um, that they are, are really kind of uh, going against this. I mean, it's a meat-based product and their staples are basically... Uh, poultry, lamb, and fish. They do eat beef, don't get me wrong, but it just doesn't seem like McDonald's is going to be hurt by any kind of massive turmoil in Iran or Iraq, to me. Uh, anyway, so uh, I'm just sitting on my hands here. You know, later this week, I'm not doing the webinar tomorrow because I've got uh, a vacation, my big 5-0 coming up. So I'm going to be heading out of town so I won't be around on Friday or Monday. And I think I'm just going to sit on this position the way it is. Uh, I'm pretty happy with the way things are working out here. And um, I, I don't know if I'm going to add anything. I will let you guys know if I do add something via Twitter, if it happens after these daily market commentaries. So you can follow me at Wolfman's blog there. Uh, also, if it happens you know, in the mornings, I'm obviously going to tell you in these. Uh, another thing, check out Wealth365. I am doing a... Uh, being a part of that summit. So keep your eye out on my social media, whether you're following me on Twitter, uh, I'm on LinkedIn. I'm, I, I'll accept you if you reach out to me on LinkedIn. And um, I'm pushing out some 
uh, links there that you guys can get involved in this Wealth Summit 365. It is a week long, over 90 speakers. Everybody from Steve Primo, if you've seen Steve Primo, to uh, Steve Bigelow, um, and uh, Booker is going to be on there. Uh, Matt Choi, or Mark Choi, I think. So there's a lot of big names that are going to be doing different types of educational webinars throughout that full week of January 20th through the 25th. So five days, uh, 90 plus speakers, you know, and it is a huge, great uh, lineup. So check that out. Uh, follow me on Twitter or check me out on LinkedIn and I'll, I'll be pushing some of those uh, links out for you to check out. All right, that's all I got for you. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy.